mysteries of creation are there. In the sky? Up in the sky. The moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. Hello and welcome to your Inner Journey Weather Report. This is for the week from January 31st to February 7th of 2021. And the weather, the actual weather, the meteorological weather in where I'm broadcasting from in Washington, D.C. is snowy, it's calm, there's a quiet upon the world. Though in the astrological weather, there's tension. So in your inner journey, weather report we use we utilize archetypal astrology to help you understand the energies that are rising in the collective and in ourselves and how we can engage and transform them through inner journeys inward inquiry inward insight inward looking meditation yoga psychedelic journeys dream work any sort of inward directed focus okay so looking at the weather for this month we can see that there is a square, which is what's called a tense alignment between Saturn and Uranus. This is a big, big alignment, which will be here for all year, even beyond this year. It was a little bit here last year, but now it's coming towards exactitude, very tight alignment as we move through this week um, into next week. And so that is a very dynamic alignment that's going to just really capture our hearts and minds for the next year in the entire world in different ways. So Saturn, the archetype of limitation, the archetype of um, constraint. Saturn is, is bound by rings. The planet Saturn is bound by rings. And there's a sense with Saturn of being bound, being limited, um, being constrained. There's also, Saturn is also the great grounding archetype, the one that makes things real, that makes us mature, that makes us grounded, that makes us disciplined by facing our constraints, our burdens, our responsibilities, our realities, our, our reality checks that keep us grounded and rooted to, to the earth and to responsibility. So that's the archetype of Saturn. Uranus is the archetype of the rebel, that which likes to break the rules and that which likes to be oriented towards freedom, towards emancipation, towards excitement, towards the thrill, towards being electric, um, eccentric. This is the, the principle of Uranus. On its challenging side, it's disruptive. It's unexpected. It's unpredictable. It's fickle. It's tricky. It's trickstery. So <clears throat> on one hand, we have Saturn, which is the archetype of stability, certainty, constancy, that's what we can count on. We know that the bills are going to be due at the end of the month, every month. Re realities and responsibilities create certitude. They create a certainty. They create a certification. Certifications have to do with, you know, when you have a certification in something, you somebody can be certain that you've done the due diligence, you've done the training, you've, you've taken up the responsibility. These are all Saturnian things. Uranus, on the other hand, likes to break free of limitations. So whereas Saturn's associated with certainty, Uranus is associated with uncertainty, th the thrill, the excitement. And they, when they get together, the freedom principle and the principle of feeling constraint, they, they wrestle with each other. They wrestle with each other out in the world. We can see it happening out in the world and they wrestle with each other inside us. And the trick to this whole kind of coming into a sense of wisdom and insight into ourselves is that the outer world and the inner world are not separate. What we see out in the outer world is a reflection of the unfolding of life, the same as, as, as our feelings inside. Whatever we feel about the outer world just reflects more about us than it does about anything else. So the outer world and the inner world are, are, are this kind of dance of, of, of one continuum, and that's called human experience. And so we can see in the outer world, these energies becoming very much activated. So you start to see that which is associated with a lot of freedom becoming linked with that which is constraining. So you have, uh, for instance, in the United States, there was an inauguration of a new president and there was a sense of, you know, one, the change of one party to another. And there was a sense of celebrating the freedom of 
you know, being in a democratic society and being able to vote, but yet the entire thing was surrounded by a giant wall. So there was this very Saturnian wall that surrounded the National Mall where the inauguration took place. And so you see that a lot with Saturn and Uranus, putting in constraints and walls and boundaries, very Saturnian things in order to maintain a sense of freedom, paradox, very paradoxical. What we want to see deeper into is that really there is, with Saturn, there can be an association with fear in the sense that Saturn brings with it constraints, realities, burdens, the heaviness of, of, of life. You know, one deadline and constraint of life is that we're mortal, you know, live forever. So deadlines, mortality, with these uh, come naturally a sense of, 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 of fear in human beings, oftentimes, sense that we will be trapped or we will lose something or we will lose our lives. Um, lose everything. That's a very Saturnian kind of dynamic. And then Uranus brings in this unpredictable quality to it. It could happen in any way. It could happen at any time. Our freedom could be limited in an unexpected way. That's the that Uranian unexpected, unpredictable. And so there becomes this sense of like, you know, what's going on? There's something unexpected, this unexpected constraint that's going to fall upon me, this unexpected burden, this unexpected kind of fear-inducing, heavy, uh, entrapping quality in the air that will fall upon me. And it's, 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 it's got that Uranian trickster quality to it. So we never know where it's going to go so, or where it's going to show up. So we put in barriers, which are Saturnian. We enact that Saturnian principle of putting in a barrier against the unpredictable in order for that unpredictable to, so that we can avoid the disruptive side of Uranus, the, the, the unpredictability, we put in a barrier in order to ensure a stable freedom. Totally paradoxical, stable, that's Saturn, freedom, Uranus. At first, when these transits come in, what our, our hope is always with transits is as they move through, we will kind of get the lesson and integrate the lesson and move on and grow from that. And so when they first come in, oftentimes there's a sense of being very uh, rough, like kind of a new energy. It's rough. It's uncertain. We're kind of awkward with it. And so having huge walls surrounding the National Mall to ensure a kind of a sense of freedom is pretty rough. That's pretty unrefined. It's pretty kind of uh, um, the energies are showing up in an unintegrated way. It's kind of like uh, if you think about something like... Um, like uh, communist Russia or something like that, or, or, or uh, East, East Germany, East Berlin, putting up a wall so that everybody within that can be free. It's, it's paradoxical, doesn't work. It's kind of, the energies have not been digested yet. They haven't really been understood. And so what we actually want is we want to face this uncertainty, the sense that, you know, there's an uncertain quality with Uranus. It's around us. We don't know. It's a trickster energy and it's linked with Saturn. So it's like the unpredictable Saturnian thing that can happen rather than trying to make freedom Saturnian, that it's constant, come to accept that there's something that is kind of um, unpredictable about the reality checks in life. We don't know where reality checks are going to come from. And so this, this transit is a reminder. It's like a clock. It's like a, um, when these transits, all transits come around, they're always a corrective energy. When we become too forgetful of the principles involved, they come back around again and test us. And so it wants to test us so that we know that this reality is just an aspect of this reality is that we have these Saturnian limitations upon ourselves. We have this, you know, we, we, we will be bound by responsibilities. We will be bound by time. Um, there is a limit to our lives. We will be bound by the, the mundane aspects of being responsible, playing a role in society. These things will bind us. And when we accept that, there's a freedom there. There's a freedom in that. When we, when we get real with the truth of reality, there's a freedom in that. There's a, if we know that we're not going to live forever, there's something there's something freeing in that. It's very paradoxical again. 
So those are the energies that are up in the collective. And those are the energies that we might face in inner journeys. And the trick is an inner journey is just a ceremony that we're putting in place to come into a very real interface with the fact that outer world and inner world, there really is no division there. In the outer world, if we're very externally oriented, we can get distracted and caught up with things outside and the stories that we tell each other <clears throat> in human society that make us think, oh, the inner world is me, it's private, outer world, something totally separate. But the whole thing is your unfolding, your spiritual unfolding. So there isn't really a boundary there. And when we do inner journeys, that's our time to remember. That's our time to remember to, to get in touch with the reality that, oh, look, what I perceive is the outer world is actually a perception of my own mind. Um, and so, so Saturn Uranus, that's, that's a larger transit that will really be here present for um, uh, almost the next three years, I believe. And it was here a little bit last year, but this is the time when it's really most intense. And this week and next week, particularly, are the times when they're really most, most intense. And I wanna show you on a graph what that looks like. Here's Saturn Uranus. This is the, you can, this is Archetypal Explorer. And this software allows us to see the timeline of these transits. So January 31st, February 7th, we can see this zero up here is the exactitude. That means when something's up here, it means the alignment is exact. So this is going towards exact. We have a description down here of, of, of Saturn square Uranus, what are the qualities of it? And then particularly this week, we have a, we're added to that transit that, that that transit itself is being transited by Venus. So we have Venus conjoined Saturn square Uranus. So that puts an extra inflection that the feeling that we have of Saturn Uranus of, of urges towards freedom and urges towards constraint and certainty, the urges towards uncertainty and certainty, kind of mashing together and trying to find trying, trying to find a new reconciliation, are going to be focused on the Venusian archetype because Venus is part of that alignment this week. And so the Venusian archetype has to do with love, has to do with beauty, it has to do with art. So you may see a lot of art coming up this week that has to do with themes, re-exploring themes of freedom versus constraint. You might see um, in beauty, um, you know, a, a kind of wild constraints, D different, different kind of free, you might see um, Uranus is also associated with the young and Saturn with the old, the old looking young, the young looking mature. These are different ways of flipping those um, in love how when we commit in love, that's very Saturnian, we can actually find freedom. There can be a fun, there can be a new vista of thrill and unexpectedness there. If we put a kind of a, some type of a boundary there, um, there can be freedom, the freedom of having boundaries. Um, so these are some of the ways that they show up, you know, Venus conjoined Uranus. We can think of somebody like and click on it here, we'll get a description down here. We can think of somebody like Russell Brand. Um, he was born of Venus square Uranus. He's kind of the, the wild rebel lover archetype kind of fits him. We've got Venus conjoined Saturn. That's uh, Annie Lennox was born with that, the singer Annie Lennox. And she's, you can, and if you've seen her, her hair is short, it's cropped short. She has a very stately way of being. So her beauty is kind of contained it's more stayed. So those are, those are, that's a Venus Saturn person and a Venus Uranus person. And that energy is being combined this week. And how does that show up in inner journeys? It shows up as attention, attention inside us, a, something inside us trying to find a new way to be around our heart, constraint, freedom, commitment, the thrill, commitment, freedom, you know, having narrowing down the friendships that's Saturn, but having the friendships be a source of, of fun, that's Uranus, set friendships, heart, love, the heart, lover, the heart, again, art, beauty. So that's, that's 
how that energy is showing up this week. Look out for it. And most of all, look in for it. And if you would like to see how these transits land in your chart specifically, which is a more specific inflection, because everything I've talked about has been how the energies show up in the collective. If you want to know how they show up specifically in your chart, you can get a, I'll include the link at the bottom of this email for Archetypal Explorer. And you can hop on and see, this is me, for instance. So the Saturn square Uranus is, is on my natal moon. And you can read all about it down here. So that's that gives my personal inflection how it's going to show up in my life. Wonderful. And for those of you who might be interested in, in finding about not only this week and how the energies of this week show up in your life, but actually understanding the themes of your life and understanding them deeply, also include a link for signing up for an archetypal astrology reading with myself. So thank you so much for joining me here today. Enjoy this week and see what's happening in the external world as what's really a reflection of the internal world, a way of celebrating that life the inner and the outer, they're, they're really not separate. You know, what, what we see out in the world is a reflection of our own mind. And as we begin to kind of not see them as so divided, we can also not take, we can see the judgments that we bring to the outer world and not take them as seriously because it's just the mind. It's just the mind passing judgments. We don't have to make it so personalized. And we can let the floodgates open up in the heart and experience life that way. Okay, thank you so much. If you have questions, by the way, put them in the comment section. I'll see if I can answer them next week.